Yes, children. Division of separate. A table of the letter five. So, if it's a travel log, of course, it's in, it's in a uh, description of the journey from the Slope Hills of Mount So, what's the purpose of this journey? To go Kora. And what is Kora? Kora is taking a round of something for spiritual purpose. Okay, it's a belief in a, you know Indian uh, system. Like all people whosoever belongs to any religion, people usually take a round of uh, their you know uh, religious uh, symbols, and it is uh, it has some spiritual significance. So here the purpose of Nick Bedatan was to go to Mount Kailash, and there he wanted to take a round of the holy place or whatever for a spiritual significance. So. Uh, in the end, when he does the Quran, that is something else. But before that, his experience of the journey, that's the you know, main essence of this chapter. So what basically we have been able to make out through the whole chapter, uh, number one, the people in hilly areas, the way they are very helpful. Okay, they are very considerate. They take a lot care of, their, of the tourists or the people who come across. They live a simple life, but they live a life of care and consideration for others. And secondly, the life of hilly areas is very difficult. Okay, for the uh, city folk, that life is not that easy. And one has to really struggle a lot to survive there. So Nick Middleton also had to. So Nick Middleton here, we, in this chapter, we come to know that he is in Rabu. Uh, he has to leave this place and he is given a sheepskin coat by, by Lamo, the inhabitant of the place. Okay, uh, he might have been living somewhere in those dwellings, and that Lamo she comes and gives him a uh, uh, sheepskin coat. Okay, because she knew that he might need it later on. She might have been able to make out that he's a uh, he's a city cop, and uh, he seems to be very uh, sensitive and all. So, and he might not have been that well equipped as he could have been. And Lamo, the dweller of that Rabu. She gives him a quote of that kind because she was able to make out that he would need this terribly later on, and it really happened. If this quote might not have been there with him, then he might not even have been able to survive. Okay, even then, he uh, got terrible, you know, uh, problems that we also know. So, okay, from there he started. From Bravo, he started, and uh, he took with him two people. He hired two people rather there. One was one So I pronounce it as Suzan. So one person was Suzan, the driver, and the other person was a Daniel. So Daniel was a driver. Uh, sorry, interpreter, uh, translator. So he would interpret the uh, English for him because the people in those areas would speak in their native language, and Daniel Nick Middleton knew only English. So he had one interpreter with him. And the other person he had was a driver. So this is on who was very experienced. So he knew all the shortcuts. He knew like how to get over the car through those uh, areas, which were actually very, very troublesome. Uh, yes, listen. So Sizan was a very skilled driver and Daniel was also the one who could, who really proved to be of great help to him because of his uh, skills, language skills. Okay, uh, Cezanne, I am already telling you, like very skilled driver. So Cezanne suggested this man, Nick Pridadan, that he would be taking a shortcut. And uh, when asked, like, would everything be fine on the way? He said that we'll see when we reach there. So point is that hilly people, you know, the people, those who live in these kinds of hilly areas, they are very adventurous. They, they don't mind taking risks because their risks are part of their life. Because their life is such... They cannot predict beforehand like whether the way out uh, after 10 minutes, what kind of way would be there. So whether it would be covered with snow or not, they don't know. So when they reach there, there only they have to make out like how to come out of that situation. So and it actually happened when they started off. Uh, first, there is a description of the uh, plain areas. 
uh, and there these people were able to meet dragobas or uh, gazelles or uh, some other kinds of animals and finally they were able, able to see the dragobas that is the shepherds shepherds were tending the sheep of course so what the narrator wants to tell us that those dragobas those shepherds when they saw the car coming they waved them at them first they were they would look at them with surprise because for these hilly people those who live over there they are very simple people they don't really have cars and all but when they find the cars coming towards them they look at the cars or the people those who are in the car with the great interest you can say No one sent to me a message. I didn't turn on the chat. Chat is on. Pragati, was I audible? Yes, uh, these people, you know, I was talking about like these people, those who are in, who live in hills, they happen to be very considerate. They are uh, inquisitive because their life own is very simple one. So when they see the others coming to their side, they are keen to look at them. So they were looking at these cars and when they saw the people sitting inside, they even waved at them. So they are very friendly, basically. Okay, so as the hills started to push up once more from the rocky wilderness, we passed the solitary drop bar standing their flocks and all. Okay. So finally, afterwards, they passed by the uh, nomadic tents. What they passed by? The nomadic tents. So in those uh, tents, the nomads lived, but uh, the prominent thing about these nomadic tents were the mastiffs. Mastiffs are the dogs who look very fierce and ferocious, and they are ex actually very terrible guys. Actually, these mastiffs were found in Chinese um, imperial courts. But they were brought to this Silk Road by the traders and all. Yeah, now listen to me. So where were we? We were talking about like nomadic tents, which they passed by. And there they found the mastiffs, those ferocious dogs. dogs. So when, they are, when those dogs saw, because the dogs were in their own tent. And when they would see, when the moment they would even hear the sound of the car coming towards their tent, they would, uh, you know, reach up to the car and they would bark as ferociously as might be possible and would not leave the car until it went out of sight. Okay, they would bark at it so ferociously. So even the uh, driver, Cezanne, had to, you know, uh, uh, he had to, uh, apply. he could not because, it, uh, because the dogs were so fearless that they came just in front of the car. So the car even swerved from the main track. Because it was a driver who had to take care of the dog, but the dog was not bothering about his own life. But anyways, they went further. Then uh, the actual journey would start. Earlier, the way Cezanne was saying, like when they would see like what kind of road it would be. And when they actually came to a place where the road was full of snow, the depth of the snow was not as, as troublesome, was not as, uh, you know, something to be tackled. But the car would not be able to move on it smoothly. So while Cezanne got out of the car, he picked up some dirt or you can say some soil from around the places and he threw it on the road so that it starts get getting some gravitational force. So the point is that the car had to move steadily on it. So he threw some dirt on the road. Anyways, then uh, the road was cleared for the car to move on and on. So this way, uh, they, ke they kept moving ahead. And now the turns, the roads started becoming all the more bumpier and sharper. Okay, the turns became very, very sharp and the roads became more bumpier. So the drive was actually very risky, but Cezanne being skilled was able to go through all this. So finally, when they were able to reach a place called Hor, okay, they reached a place called Hor, and the narrator says Nick Middleton had read out somewhere earlier that Hor was a very beautiful place. It was a picturesque place. He had read about its beauty in other books. 
and when he reached over there he found this place exactly the opposite to what he had read the earlier travelers they had talked about its uh, spiritual value its uh, you know beauty and all but he says like what was actually there that was exactly the opposite because this was a very dry place without any vegetation and all not only this it was a very you can say a dirty place also thanks to the tourists those who go there so after hor you know they reached darchan yes at hor this very nikmit sizan uh, had to change the uh, vehicle uh, wheels of his car he got them repaired and all because his car was getting punctured so he got the repair work done for the car at hor okay then they reached darchan uh darshan was the you can say uh, last point to reach mount everest you can say it was the uh, it was the closest station to mount everest so when they reached this place darshan they are uh, uh, already at, from hor uh, daniel had left nick, nick bidatan he had gone back sizan was only with him because he had to make him reach darshan so when they reached darshan then uh, uh, they were took some uh, hotel where they had to stay at night narrator nick bidelton his condition became very poor he could not sleep even for a while so there he tried to sleep for some time but he woke up abruptly with a feeling that he might not ever be able to wake up again he had such kind of you know congestion okay his chest was blocked he could not even breathe so when he would wake up when he would sit straight then he would be able to breathe properly so he kept awake throughout the night and in the very morning sizan took him to a uh, medical darshan medical college it was a tibetan uh, college and when he went there he saw a tibetan doctor who hardly looked like a doctor because he was wearing the uh, just uh, you know uh, uh, that uh, the dress the way those people would wear so but that doctor uh, asked him some questions so he might have just asked about the symptoms he had and he was given some medicine the medicine was in the form of some uh, small pellets uh, tablets not big tablets very small ones and they looked like sheep's dung and uh, anyways narrator says like he took the medicine and after the very first days dose he was able to sleep well at night so what we want to say like those medicines it might have been a herbal or a, a medicine and that's effect was so good that he was able to have a good sleep it was a five days course he might have done he might have felt better also but now at darshan when sizan saw that uh, nick middleton was becoming better that his condition was okay he decided to leave he wanted to go back to ravu now because he was a driver by profession so he had made his uh, client reach the destination now his job was over and he had to go back because for these kinds of drivers two things are there number one their client should remain well and now he was okay now he wanted to go back at the earliest okay and sizan makes it very clear he says i it doesn't really matter if nick middleton doesn't survive but for his professional well being he should stay well got it so these people are very because these people are adventurous so they don't like uh, they are not much attached with life and death for them life and death is something safe but yes professional uh, etiquette say that if your client is with you then he must remain all right otherwise there comes a question mark on your professional efficiency also isn't it so it is a matter of your repute anyways uh, this is sidan also leaves him and then now this uh, man nick middleton is left alone and now he has to go to do kora but now the question was like with whom should he go because now the difficulty was that he had reached this place a bit earlier he was told that uh, uh, tourism in uh, tourism for mount kailash starts somewhere in this month and he had reached that place a bit in advance so tourists had not yet started coming he had reached quite there in advance so no one was there and uh, there was no question that he would go and do the kora all alone because his uh, uh, health was not that good so he was at the uh, darchan's cafe only one cafe was there 
so he was there at the cafe and he uh, was having his cup of tea and all meanwhile he uh, a person came to him uh, and he he was reading a book he was reading one uh, english novel only and at that time somebody comes and uh, that person you know finds that this person was holding a book in english so he also comes to him because uh, that english book means that the person also knows english so the one who comes and approaches him was norbu the one who had come from the one who was also going to do kora so norbu was the one who also knew only english so he was also in uh, search of somebody who knew english and was about to do kora so norbu found a companion in the form of nick middleton and nick middleton found norbu as his companion so now they it, this is how the story comes to an end like where they got companion companionship that's it right oh uh, yeah